In this video I want to show you how to use Mastercam to mill a pocket. You can see on the screen I have drawn a simple shape, a 3 by 4 inch block, 1 inch thick, with a pocket that's 1.5 inches wide, 2 inches long, and 3 quarter inches deep. Now the corner radii are 5 16 or 312 thousandths, and we're going to start off by drawing this simple shape, and then I'll show you how to rough and finish the pocket. So let's start with a new file. Alright, so once you've opened up a new file, make sure that your construction plane is set to top and that you have 2D active instead of 3D and that your Z is set to zero. Then from the create menu, we're going to pick rectangular shapes. Now the outside of the part is going to be 4 inches long and then 3 inches wide. It's going to be a rectangular shape and we're going to use the center of the rectangle to snap to the origin. Then we're going to click on the blue button that says apply. And then we're going to enter new values. And it's going to be two and a half inches long for the pocket. And that is going to be one and a half inches wide. We're going to use a 0.312 radius. The shape is still rectangular and we're still going to anchor using the center of the rectangle. And then we're going to snap it to the origin also and you can see there is our basic shape. So then we click OK and the origin is now located in the center but we want the origin to be located on this upper left hand corner. So we're going to highlight our shapes and then we're going to click on X form move to origin and then it says select the point to translate from we're going to snap to this corner and it will move the whole shape to that new location. In most cases your origin is going to be located at the left upper corner because you're holding that shape probably inside of a vise and therefore the solid jaw is on this side and then you usually have a stop set on this left side so therefore the origin is the intersection of these two edges. Alright so we're going to rotate our view and we're going to use these shapes to create a solid so from the solids menu we're going to extrude and we're going to click chain, we just grab one of the outside legs, click OK, we're going to create a body, we're going to make it a one inch thick and click OK. Then turn the solids off by clicking on this wireframe icon and then we're going to click on solids again and we're going to extrude, chain, and we're going to pick this pocket shape, click OK now we're going to cut the body to a distance of 0.750 and click OK and you can see it created a 3 quarter inch deep pocket inside that solid. So if I turn the solids back on, there's our shape. Now I'm going to change the color of the solids so that it is easier to see. So I'm going to right click on system color, click on the solid, click the green button and this orange shape usually shows up real good for the video. So then we click on clear colors and you can see we have blue wireframe colors and an orange for the solids. Alright so at this point we're ready to mill the pocket. We're going to start off by turning off the solids so click on this wireframe icon and then we're going to right click next to the red arrow, wand over mill tool paths and then select pocket Then enter pocket for the NC name click OK and then select chain we're going to select the top of that pocket. Once it highlights, click OK. Then we're going to select the tool. And from our select library tool, we're going to pick half inch flat end mill. Click OK. So at this point, that's tool number 239, so we're going to change that. We're going to right click, edit. We're going to make that tool number 1. Then on the parameters, feed rate is going to be 20 inches a minute, plunge rate, 10 inches a minute, retract 100 and the RPM 2000. Then we click OK. So you can see we have a half inch end mill, zero corner radius, the name is a half inch flat end mill, tool number one, length offset one and diameter offset one. We got a feed rate of 20 inches a minute and a spindle speed of 2000 RPM. Then we're going to put a check mark in a rapid retract and a check mark in a force tool change. And we're going to enter pocket in the comment section. 
then we select cut parameters and we're going to set machining direction to climb tip compensation is set the tip roll cutters around corner I usually set that to none I'm going to leave the rest alone and then put this at zero and this at zero and then we have a standard pocket type okay so you can kind of see a preview of that standard pocket type and then we'll go on to the roughing tab now you can see all the different options that you get to pick from and it kind of shows you how the material is removed on the roughing operation working from the center out or back and forward in a zigzag motion or a constant overlap spiral you just kind of have to play with those different settings I'm gonna recommend that you pick parallel spiral it kind of works from the center outward and that seems to make the most sense in most cases the step over percentage is 50 percent so the half inch in the mill is going to take 250 thousandths step over so if you change that to 25 you can see it will take step over distances of 125 so let's pick 50 in this case hit enter and then the next thing we do is click on entry motion now we have three different options we click off we can click ramp and you can see it just kind of zigzags down as it goes to the depth of the cut or it will helix in and that's probably the preferred method then it automatically looks at the size of your end mill and enters these values right here now I would recommend that that max radius is just a little bit smaller than the radius of the tool and then the minimum radius 50 thousandths then the Z clearance is where the spiral starts above the part the XY clearance is making sure that as you're spiraling down that you're at least a hundred thousandths away from the wall as it's spiraling down into that pocket down to your first depth and then the plunge angle is the angle downward as you're plunging into the material and three degrees seems to work pretty decent we're gonna output arc moves in the program and we're gonna leave the rest set just like this page then on finishing from the cutter compensation we're gonna select where and that means that the post processor is gonna output a G41 cutter compensation for the finish pass then we're gonna put a check mark where it says machine finish passes only at final depth because I'm gonna show you how to break up the depth so it doesn't take 750 thousandths all at once and then make sure there's a check mark where it says machine finish passes after roughing all pockets so that it doesn't finish the walls of the pocket at each step down then on lead in lead out I'm gonna shorten up the tangent approach a little bit and then reduce the radius we're gonna copy that to the other side and then we're gonna also have 20 thousandths of overlap and I'll show you in the simulator what that means so at this point I'm gonna click on linking parameters make sure we have everything set to absolute the retract is set at a quarter inch feed plane at 0.1 top of stock is zero and the depth instead of entering the value you can click on the depth and then let it snap to the bottom of the pocket and when you do that it automatically sees that that is sitting at minus 0.750 so at that point we click OK we're going to watch the simulator run this part all right so we're going to right click and we're going to click fit and that kind of zooms in to our part and we're going to left click on back plot selected operations you can see that's where the end mill approaches the part it's starting out at about a hundred thousandths above the part and it's going to start spiraling into our pocket and currently our settings tell it to go all the way down to Z minus 750 thousandths so it's going to spiral down at a three degree angle and you can see in the lower left hand corner we're sitting at Z minus 750 thousandths so it's going straight to finish on the floor and that's usually not good there's enough tool pressure to leave an ugly finish on the bottom of that pocket so that is probably not something you would want to do and then here you see the final pass because the floor is already finished it only finishes the wall and you can see that overlap is right here so that when it comes off the wall it just goes a little bit past where it entered the wall 
so that we have a nice flat surface. So let's change our settings to where the depth of cut is only going to cut half the depth at a time and also leaves 20 thousandths for finishing on the floor and then also takes a finish pass on the wall. Alright so let's click OK, go back into parameters and then we're going to select depth of cuts, we're going to put a check mark in this box and activate that feature and then under max rough step we're going to enter 0.4 and then also we're going to take one finish pass and that's going to be 20 thousandths. So just changing that let's go ahead and take a look at our simulator and see what that looks like. So because of the changes we made we had to regenerate all dirty operations, back plot and now let's see what it does. So we're spiraling in and look at your lower left hand corner you see we're sitting at Z minus 365 it removes all the material at that depth then it spirals the rest of the way but it's only going to Z minus 730 thousandths so that is protecting the wall and the floor at this time and then it's going to spiral one more last time and now we're finishing at Z minus 750 thousandths it finishes the floor and then it comes back and makes one final pass to finish that wall off so if we take a look at the same operation in the top view go ahead and click fit you can also click on this quick verify and then as it's machining you can see the path that the end mill makes and that that kind of helps you sometimes make sure that all the material is being removed that you're looking to remove there's our cut at minus 750 if I zoom in you can see we're not up against that wall yet so now it's going to finish the floor and see minus 750 thousands we're still not finished on the wall but we are on the floor and now it takes one final pass that you can see it finishes the wall on the inside what it's looking at there when you look in the parameters under this finishing tab the spacing is set to 10 thousandths so let's set that to 40 thousandths and then click OK we're going to have to regenerate all dirty operations and let's back plot alright so let's watch that and this time we should clearly see stock left to be removed by the finishing pass so let's speed this up a little bit now you can see the distance from where the end mill has been roughing and the finishing wall is now greater so I showed you the field where that's changed so now on the final pass after it finishes the floor which is going to do right now we're at minus Z750 now it's going to take one final pass arc in and arc back out and we're completely finished so we'll click OK and we're done with pocketing you can see there can be many variations of pocketing this is just merely a introduction to pocketing so I hope that helped you thanks for watching